Okay, so hopefully this is working. Hi everyone, um, I'm Freddie. So I am a engineer at Deutsche Bank and I'm gonna talk you through a project that we've been working on with Finos uh, for about 18 months now um, called the Cloud Service Certification Project. So I'll quickly um, introduce myself. So I, I work in PL technology at Deutsche. Um, I've been with the bank for about two years and I've been working on this project for about 18 months pretty much since we first got involved with it. So I'm going to talk you through um, cloud service certification. The idea behind the cloud service certification project is that all major banks pretty much are trying to adopt public cloud one way or another and uh, the way they're doing that um, is by going through each service and working out what risks they need to uh, calculate and um, and what their settings need to say on their um, cloud services. So if you're trying to create a, um, if you're trying to put bank data in a Postgres database on the cloud, for example, you would need to um, have certain settings enabled, like maybe encryption at rest or encryption in transit. Um, the ramifications of that is that as a bank, if you're trying to adopt public cloud, developers in banks are generally used to um, only being able to create things that are compliant and secure. So, um, if I'm a uh, so I'm a developer at the bank, and I don't go into Deutsche Bank's policy documents and make sure that I can do what I'm about to do before I deploy to um, OpenShift internally, for example, um, I just do it. And the reason I can do that is because I know that anything I'm able to do within Deutsche Bank's network is compliant and secure and complies with the bank's risk appetite. That is often taken for granted by people who work in banks, um, but there's a huge amount of work that goes into enabling that to be the case and making it easy for developers to focus on solving their problems rather than constantly thinking about um, am I missing a regulation here and there and of course the reality is that even if um, even if banks did require developers to go and look at those policies that wouldn't be a workable way forward because um, it, it, there's just too much to think about you know Deutsche are operating in around 80 countries um, and we've got, uh, we've got nearly a hundred thousand staff and, and some banks are bigger. And so, you know, that, that's, that's not really workable to say to a developer, every time you want to do anything, you have to go and check those policies. So we've got to maintain that ability for anything to ha anything that happens internally is compliant and secure by nature. So how do we maintain that while we're adopting public cloud? that's what the cloud service certification project aims to um, aims to achieve so um, a quick introduction to the project the collaborators um, to the cloud service certification project are mainly have mainly been Deutsche and JP Morgan um, up until a few months ago really Finos has been leading the project and Finos uh, as many of you will know is a Linux Foundation member um, joining this year and uh, so the Finos team have kind of guided Deutsche and, and JPM to lead this project. Um, we've had a lot more collaborators getting involved over the last, uh, well, during 2020, really. We've now got Morgan Stanley. We've had UBS involvement. We've had a lot of help from Red Hat um, and then the cloud providers themselves, Microsoft and Google and various um, other companies. We've had CS, we've had uh, City Hub and um and consulting companies that are helping us to kind of work out the most efficient way of, of collaborating and uh solve some of the technical challenges with us so that's that's the collaborators do it, um and and there's sort of banks are in and out on this project and we're we're really pushing this because we've we've kind of seen that this could be a really really valuable asset for us so the project purpose um 
The mission of the Cloud Server Certification Working Group is to accelerate the development, deployment and adoption of a common set of controls and tests for cloud services. You can see that on the screen. Um, and so that, that, the long and the short of that is that we want adoption of public cloud for banks to be very easy. And we've recognized that there's no intellectual property for banks in the ability to adopt public cloud, right? So, um, you know, our RIP does not sit in our ability to adopt public cloud. All banks are trying to achieve the same thing. Um, a lot of banks are trying to comply with the same regulations. So rather than reinventing the wheel and kind of over and over again, all of us coming to the same conclusions about the same services, um, we're, we're just collaborating and, and doing that work centrally. Um, so why is this why is this necessary? Well, the majority of cloud security incidents are due to human error. So you can read the quote on the screen. And Capital One is a really good example of this. Um, apologies if anyone from Capital One's on the call, but uh, last year Capital One had a breach in public cloud. So they put some data in the public cloud in an AWS. Um, I think it was an EC2 bucket and that data was compromised. That data, however, was not hacked in the in the sort of brute force sense of the word. So um, it was a it was a misconfigured container. And so, where does the blame sit? So this was one of the first um, the first problems of its kind. And this was a really interesting case study for those of us that work in financial services, because what it says is. Um, Okay, so it wasn't AWS's fault because the container did exactly what it was supposed to do. Was it Capital One's fault? Well, maybe, but um, that that it was it was a case of not having, um, I guess, tested the the different settings in AWS, and of course that um, that those switches are not owned by Capital One themselves, and you know these these cloud services are uh, a complex, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of switches, there's a lot of settings that you can apply to all the different services, particularly when you're working um, across different cloud providers, Google, Azure, uh, AWS, Ali Cloud, etc., IBM, Oracle. And uh, the, the result of that was the US bank shares slid nearly 6%. Um, and, and there was a hack affecting over 100 million customers, which is, you know, th that's that's what we're all trying to avoid, really. So from the bank's point of view, what this project provides is much stronger controls, um, proof of compliance. So we will be able to uh, prove to regulators, uh, to audit and internally that um, what we're running in the public cloud is compliant because we'll have tests that show us that. Um, genuine multi-cloud. So a lot of banks are talking about multi-cloud. Um, that's kind of not a reality for, for a lot of banks. It's sort of one or the other because of the overhead of adopting an individual set of services. You know, if you if you decide as a bank to adopt um, GCP, for example, then you have to train your people in how GCP works. Uh, you have to know what is available in GCP and you have to make those risk appetite decisions about um, whether uh, what what your requirements are for the containers that you're you're spinning up in GCP. This project will also provide very fast switching between cloud providers, um, and that can be beneficial where um, you know banks want to diversify across providers rather than having all their eggs in one basket, as it were. Um, and it also provides the the engineering culture, um, which is a huge challenge for banks. I think trying to build you know, huge numbers of technologists and trying to operate like uh, in that in that kind of famous tech startup culture that the public cloud providers and, you know, big tech firms do so well. And, uh, you know, working really closely with those companies on this project provides a huge engineering culture benefit to the banks as well. From the tech contributors point of view, um, it's access to the financial services industry, which is, you know, one of the oldest and most powerful industries in the world um, and an incredibly difficult industry to get into and understand as an outsider. Um, and so, you know, my next point, a more in-depth understanding, the 
the, the cloud providers particularly are really keen to understand the challenges faced by financial services providers because so many of their customers just don't have those kind of challenges, particularly when you're a bank operating, you know, globally across regulatory jurisdictions. Um, and it also gives them influence over the public cloud choice. So, you know, working with us on these projects allows um, the public cloud providers to show the, the power of their platforms and, um, and what's, what's available, what they can offer us. So how exactly does this work? Um, so for each service, we will go through this workflow that you can see on screen. So uh, it will pick a service like um, Postgres, for example. Yeah, Microsoft Azure has a, has a Postgres database um, ingrained in it. So first we'll, we'll build a policy document. We call that a service approval accelerator. And that is defining the parameters of our risk appetite for that service. So that's talking about um, what is compulsory, what is optional, and, um, and how should those constraints look on public cloud. So what should we, um, you know, for, for a database, for example, do we need encryption at rest? Do we need encryption in transit? Um, what, what, which IP address ranges can we expose? And what are the options there as well? So the service approval accelerator not only says, okay, all banks have to comply with this or, or we don't need to care about these, but it actually also says, um, so there's some options here depending on what kind of data you're putting in the cloud. And from a financial services point of view, that's really valuable because of course the cloud providers themselves could tell us, um, it could tell us what options there are, but they're not going to be able to give us the kind of insight from a financial services point of view as to, okay, um, this might be re required by X regulator, or there might be a knock on effect of a certain, uh, of a certain setting. So once we've defined that service approval accelerator, that, that policy document, we then move on to um, creating BDD test scenarios. So we want we really want this to be easily accessible, easily readable. And as, as you developers out there will know, um, you know, Gherkin files, given when then cases are really, um, really structured, easy to understand way of writing tests um, at the top level and a really good way of, of mapping tests onto requirements. So we've defined those requirements in the policy document. We're now mapping them onto those BDD test scenarios. So we've written our BDD test scenarios, our Gherkin feature files, we then map that further onto policy as code. Um, and that can be Terraform. Uh, we're currently having a discussion over um, uh, Terraform versus uh, a, a couple of other providers. And that, that policy as code will allow us to um, spin up, uh, actually spin up the containers themselves using the um, compliance as code that, that's in our repository. So if you're a bank and you're wanting to create a Postgres database and you want to comply with certain settings, you can download these Terraform scripts and spin it up and you know that they're thoroughly tested and you've got the BDD scenarios and you've got the policy document to explain exactly what regulations you're, um, you're complying with. And finally, uh, you've got your test fixtures. So um, th those are kind of back testing on the BDD and on your Terraform scripts to ensure that once you've created your, um, once you've created your containers, those are indeed doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, and you, know, you can kind of test that the, um, that the behavior is as it's expected. So let's go and look at some code. So I'll flip over to our GitHub repository. Um, this is just illustrating at the moment, we've got Google Kubernetes engine is a work in progress. Postgres on Azure, Deutsche has just uh, contributed their service approval accelerator for that. And Amazon Redshift was um, contributed by JP Morgan previously. So this is the cloud service certification main project. Um, it's open, anyone can join it. And if developers would like to get involved, then, then please do drop me a message afterwards and let me know. Um, so we've got a project wiki, which explains a little bit more about it. I'll show you the service approval accelerator for Postgres, because I think that's a really good um, place to start. So the format is a markdown file. We want all of it to stay in this GitHub so that we've got a single, single place to access the whole project. And so that, as I say, it's as accessible as possible. It's as easy to understand. Um, and really lots of different financial services institutions can access this information. 
So if I flick through a couple of these, um, identity and access management, for example, um, if we look at authorization, we're saying that it's recommended to only assign Active Directory, Azure Active Directory groups within Postgres and not create individual users within Postgres itself. So um, what we're saying is that you'd have an Active Directory, Azure Active Directory instance um, on Azure and those roles are used to define the access to your database. Um, so that's an example of uh, a, a specific, you know, we're saying this is the, the way we think you're going to have best control over your um, authorization to your Postgres database. So if I flick down to another one, uh, we've got encryption at rest. So um, we want encryption at rest. It's required for data governance and compliance efforts. We've cited a few um, government and industry regulations, HIPAA, PCI, FedRAMP, uh, laying out specific safeguards regarding data protection and encryption requirements. Um, and we're also saying that we want that data encryption to be using customer managed keys. Um, uh, so Azure allows you to bring your own key, BYOK, for data protection at rest. And that allows you to actually hold the keys yourself rather than having the keys stored in um, as, your, as your key store. So you can flick through this service approval accelerator and you can see plenty of, um, there's lots of examples. So IP, IP firewall rules, we're onto network security now. Um, and we're saying that if you want to create your network on Azure, then we've got some recommendations for how you could build that, um, creating proxies to allow you to access your um, company network from Azure, obviously not opening your uh, public IP addresses to the outside world. So you only want to be able to access that from within your company network. So that's the service approval accelerator. Uh, I'll show you an example, a quick example of a bit of code. So we've got some, we've got some pull requests open here. Um, and uh, Kubernetes, we have, um, let me find the right one. We've got some Terraform scripts being contributed as well. Uh, this is really slow apologies okay here we go so we've got some kubernetes scripts here um and here's the service approval accelerator for our google kubernetes engine um that's our markdown file and then we go in here and you can see we've got some Terraform scripts. So if I open up the main Terraform script, you can see we're creating Google Compute Network, Compute Firewall, uh, right the way down to the Kubernetes cluster here. And that's using the settings that we've recommended in our server appro service approval accelerator. So that's how we recommend um, we're, gonna, we're gonna go forward. We're really trying to start with the code and uh, so we're going from the ground up and we're this project is saying let's just pick a service and any of the companies involved in this project can pick a service and go ahead and um, you know start start building um, defining the service approval accelerator that's then discussed by the group um, and then that that information is contributed to the repository via pull requests uh, so for Deutsche that's linked up to our internal um, Bitbucket repository and we can push that over a proxy to the outside world for some companies it's not that difficult um, but yeah if you'd like to get involved then please do let me know um, we, we really welcome individuals and organizations to get involved in this project um, whether you're wanting to contribute Terraform whether you're uh, more on the cloud side or indeed just wanting to get involved in the discussions around the risk appetites and service approval accelerators that would be really valuable to us um, so I'm going to open it up for questions and thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a really good uh, open source strategy forum. Mm -hmm.